Hi there, and thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of your Wheel and Anchor weekly newsletter, where quite obviously I've returned to a rather chilly and wintry Toronto. We're hard at work at releasing all those new programs that were asked for by our members in our recent trip, trip inspiration survey. And the most recent one that we came out with and which you'll find information about in the blog below is our Italian villa experience. I know many of you may have traveled to Italy before. Um, perhaps you visited Rome or Florence or uh, Venice. Um, but if you haven't had the chance to, uh, to, to stay in and sample a true uh, historic Italian villa, then this is the type of program for you. Uh, we had our webinar just the other day and uh, you can find a copy on the webpage. Uh, we talked with the owner of the villa as well as my local partner over there, what it's like to stay in one of these 17th century villas. It's a, um, an art gallery, it's so much more than just an accommodation, but it's really like living a little bit of history and exploring the areas around uh, Veneto, like uh, Vicenza and Padua uh, and Verona, all these cities that you might have heard from, from Shakespearean plays. Uh, and there's really a tremendous amount of history, fabulous wine and terrific food that Italy is so well known for. So um, it's really a, a unique experience. And as I say, you'll find some details about that below. Of course, I couldn't mention Italy without mentioning um, some current affairs that we're all very well aware of. The coronavirus, which has uh, taken hold in so many parts of the world. And a number of members have uh, called me up and emailed me and asked me what I think about this. And of course, as travelers, um, you know, it gives us a lot of concern about what it means for, for travels that we, we have either through Wheel and Anchor or on our own. And of course, you know, the coronavirus is still uh, a big mystery for a lot of people. And I certainly don't pretend to have all the answers. But, you know, I think it's important that we inform ourselves and that we monitor the news, something that I do, needless to say, on a, on a daily basis. And I think we have to also read a little bit beyond the major headlines and try to understand a little bit about what it actually means as a traveler um, in, uh, in, in, in thinking about and, and planning to, to go to these afflicted countries and as I say we don't we don't have all the answers here we're watching the situation carefully um, in hopes that they are able to um, contain this contain this virus and uh, and and make uh, make the paths clear for us to to travel to all these different parts of the world again so stay tuned on that I'm sure I'll have more to stay in the over the coming weeks as we see how this evolves uh, and I think the most part the most important thing as I say is to inform yourself uh, beyond that mainstream news and, and all of the information and misinformation that's being circulated out there to really try to understand how it impacts you and, and all of us. And, uh, and uh, I, I want to say that I, um, I'm very cognizant of the, of the situation and of the concerns of all of our members uh, and we'll be taking that into account as we um, look into our spring, summer and fall travel schedule. So in the meantime, wherever you are, whether you're here at home in Chile, Ontario or elsewhere in Canada, um, I wish you happy travels. I know I'm looking forward to going with a few of our members down to, again, warmer climes um, down in Panama, where we look forward to having a great adventure starting next week. So I'll be coming back to you from there next week and uh, again, wishing you happy travels as always.